Difficulties, but and welcome back to Small Biz Matters. You are listening to Triple H 100.1 FM. Thank you so much for joining me once again. My name is Alexi Boyd. Just after that quick break, we are now having our fantastic show, which is going to be all about wealth, wealth, not wealth, well-being and fitness and just basically looking after yourself, which I think is a bit of a concept that we small businesses aren't great at, but um, it's definitely something we can work on. We can always improve that when it comes to working in our small businesses. This is the thing, David, and, 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 and Dave, well, first of all, let me welcome David Bowman from Step Into Thank Life. you, Alexi. It's great to have you on the program after we've been talking about this for a number of years because, um, you know, like everything, I think all small business owners tend to put health and well-being and fitness on the back burner. Yes. We don't consider this to be crucial or important for the growth of our business. We don't think of it as profitability. We don't think of it as numbers on the page. And therefore, it just gets pushed to the bottom of the to-do list. Indeed. When in fact from what you're going to be telling me today, it's actually something that we need to put to the top of our, of our importance list, really. I think that um, the, the evidence is clear with the general population um, and more so with small business owners, I think, because small business people are so focused on what they do in their businesses. And we start our businesses with this um, amazing passion and desire to help others in a lot of instances and the people then that get helped least are ourselves mm. and we really need to bring our focus back to ourselves because if we are feeling physically and mentally healthier and happier then everything else benefits around us exactly and i think what you're saying there is is um we all know what it feels like when you feel uh i guess more energized and you've got more time. It feels like you've just got more time and you've just got more energy to do the things that need to be done. Um, it doesn't happen when we're sick, obviously, because we're run down. Yep. But we're almost having the same impact on ourselves when we're not um, looking after ourselves physically. It's like you're, you're constantly running on a, on a machine that you, is not it's on its optimal performance. Indeed. And it, and it needs that service of uh, the body and mind needs that service of just being away from the business for a while so that you can switch off. Now, if that means just going for a walk with your dog, if you're lucky enough to own a dog, um, if you've got young children, take them out for a bush walk. Again, have a look at this beautiful area that we live in everywhere on the North Shore. There's a bush trail within five minutes of where you live, mm. literally. And, and often in cities as well, there's not, it's not that far that you, can, you have to go to find some green space. Indeed. Even if it's just the local oval and you're walking around it, um, there's a lot to be said about you know, being surrounded by the greenery and the yep. lush and the, you know, the nature that's side it. of things as well, which is another mental health thing. That, that's it indeed. And um, look, I think, I mean, that's one of the attractions of our business, of being an outdoor training business, is that we're getting people into some sunlight safely so you're getting your dose of vitamin d particularly at this time of the year it's just beautiful because the uv levels are not that high mm. now if there's mm. any skin doctors out there they're saying you should be putting your block out on all the time guys 15 20 well, minutes I know, it's like, it's 15 like, or 20 minutes yeah. a day without block out on yeah. is fine yeah. you need that to be healthy with your levels of vitamin d mm. um and just communing with nature Get out there and listen to the birds and have a look at what's going on with the changes in the trees, with the seasons. And I mean, have a look at the new green growth looking coming at the moment with spring coming on. It's just stunning. And days like this, amazing. And I think that's what um, a lot of us need to reconnect with is that being outdoors because you know, you have a tendency when you're running a business that it's nonstop. Yep. Um, you could literally be working 24 hours a day and you wouldn't feel as though you're making a dent in all the workload that you've got. So how do you break through, what, what's your top tip for the first uh, step that you can take to really breaking down that barrier of, I have to work, otherwise, you know, we're living hand to mouth. How do you make how do you how do you put into your consciousness the need to make uh, physical fitness a, a bit a more priority. Of a priority? The same as you would do with anything else that you do in your work life. For so that is, you prioritise it, put it into your diary, and have it that you you find a space in your day, even if it's only for thirty minutes. And it might be at the moment that you need to do that at five thirty in the morning. Well, guess what? It's light at five thirty in the morning at the moment, so that's fine. Get up half an hour early, mm -hmm. go for a walk, mm -hmm. or if you've, if you've got some issues where you don't want to go out and walk, investigate stuff like Tibetan yoga. 
um, where you can do a 20-minute workout in your living room if you want to, or as things warm up, go and get a yoga mat and go in your backyard and go and do a 20-minute session of Tibetan yoga in your backyard. How do you find out about what Tibetan yoga is? Like everything else, Google it, <laughs> YouTube it. <laughs> so there's there's basically five rights of Tibetan yoga, and uh, so in other words, five different exercises. Everyone's got a slightly different way of doing them, but you do those every day you're going to feel a difference in a very short period of time. And is it a matter of a balance of strength and um, flexibility and breathing? Because as you're saying this, yes. I find myself thinking about my breathing, which I'm I'm a shocking shallow breather. I, yes. can't, I, I find myself literally holding my breath when I'm stressed. Yep. And I'm presuming that this sort of retrains the body to get you breathing correctly and thinking about that. Exactly. And the YouTube guides will actually tell you about inhale and exhale as you change position doing these um, Tibetan yoga poses. So um, it's really a combination, as you said, of flexibility, improving mobility, um, improving your mindfulness because just focusing in on your breathing is actually meditative and um, just leaving you in a, in a peaceful frame of mind, energised for the rest of your day. Is, it, is that why you would recommend doing that sort of thing at the beginning of the day because the flow-on effects are sort of better than... Well, I suppose you could do it just before you go to bed as well because you might sleep better. Yeah, I think I think it ha- it's more beneficial first thing in the morning straight out of bed because it gets your body moving. Mm. You do it at the end of the night, your body's already moving. So you you've you've lost that additional benefit of getting up and getting blood flow and clearing your mind for what's coming up for the rest of the day. Um, so I, I mean, I I talk from a personal preference as well, and early morning for me is my preference. That's to work so out. not me. No, the only <laughs> thing that can get me out of bed to do exercise in the morning is my dog, and she's very insistent. So those of you out there, out there, and I'm going to say this, I say this to people all the time. Oh, yeah, how do you find time to exercise? It's like get a dog because you won't find the time. They will make you find the time, and I think that's that's kind of the urgency and the necessity from their point of view, and yeah. and almost the cruelty that you're. You, 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 you're, you're instigating on them if you're not actually meeting their demands. You, they're like an additional child <laughs> they are in the indeed. family. Yes, they you, are you have to jump to every demand. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that finding the right time. Is there something to be said for, I guess, the circadian rhythm with everybody being a little bit different about finding the right time for you to exercise? Because Like I said, I could literally work 14 hours a day in my business nonstop and still feel like I wasn't achieving what I needed to achieve. So when do you, how do you test out to find the right time in your body that where where exercise might be the most beneficial? You just said the word, you've got to test Mm -hmm. and work out what's best for you. So commit to a couple of weeks and just try different times and see if there's something that actually works better because it's got to fit not only your circadian rhythms, but... Um, what's going on in your personal life in your schedule as well. So there's two things there that you've you really got to try and make work to make it work best for you. Um, what I find is that if I, if I work out in the evenings, I come home so wired that I can't actually go to sleep. Okay. So I, I, I will go for a workout if there's been no other time during the day to do it, but I know then that I've got to have a wind-down period. Mm. And given that I'm a five o'clock a.m. riser every morning, <laughs> those of you who if only you could have seen the look that I just got from Alexi <laughs> when I mentioned five a.m. <laughs> um, is that I, I've got to be wary that I can actually go to sleep, so I try not to work out too much in the evenings. And is that let's let's have a look at you know you're testing these times out. Let's look at some practical ways that you can feel it because a lot of us are so disconnected with our bodies and and what our bodies are trying to tell us that we don't listen anymore so you know the typical thing about what is your body doing 20 minutes after you've ingested something Mm. um you know are you clearing your throat are you feeling a little bit queasy um do you feel a bit stiff are you bloated are you farting a lot is you know what are you doing to listen to your body when you eat different things that's one thing but what sort of things triggers, um, I guess, uh, indicators would our body be telling us if something's not feeling comfortable when we're exercising at certain times of the day? What should we be looking out for? Energy levels, whether they're increasing or decreasing. I think um, fatigue levels as well, because you should feel some sort of energy after you've done some exercise. There should be a spike in energy. Um, so if you're not feeling that, maybe that's not the right time of the day for you to be exercising. Um, it, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess 
The reason I'm struggling to answer this is because so people have become so disconnected with the relationship between exercise and eating well and how that impacts how they um, perform on a daily basis that they're really flying blind when they start out. And it's only just through trying stuff that they're going to figure out what's right for them. Mm. And it has to be coupled with, you've, you've raised a really good point there, it has to be coupled with what you're eating as well. There's no way that you can continue to eat crappy, fatty, sugary junk food and expect that these 30-minute walks or the starting point of what it is that you're going to do are going to have a major impact. You have It has to come in conjunction with, I presume. And, and a lot of people do find that when they start an exercise program and they're starting from a low fitness base, that it actually changes that the body brain connection then starts to tell them what their body actually needs to ingest from a nutritional perspective. So in some instances, you'll find that if you've got in your diary that you're getting up at five, your alarms going off at 5.30 in the morning, you won't have that glass of wine at nine o'clock at night, right? So it starts to change what you do with your habits, which is all beneficial mm. because by not having that glass of wine and you're getting up early the next morning, there's two extra benefits that you're getting for your health that you didn't have before. And I guess that's what's why it's really important that if your body's telling you that it doesn't have a craving for sugary, sweet, fattery, alcohol, things that are negative for it, yep. actually listen to it. Don't go, well, this is the time of day that I have a wine, regardless of the fact that my body is telling me it doesn't want it. Actually listen. Listen to your body. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you can break down that cycle, I suppose. Um, we're going to take a quick break here on Small Biz Matters on Triple H 100.1 FM. And when we come back after the break, I want to ask David more about some really practical things that we can do just to get started. Um, you're listening to Triple H. We'll be back after this. Today's topic is all about being fit, well, healthy, happy, mentally, physically well. I'm, I'm trying to help you draw a connection between the amount of exercise that you do, the type of exercise that you do, and to be honest, your profitability as a business. So um, let's help people, uh, I guess, take that first step, David. Just before the break, you were talking about the best time of day for each person and you have yes. to test those things out. But really, I want to talk to the people who are literally sitting on their butts right now. They haven't moved. They possibly haven't moved in the last week. Mm -hmm. um, they literally got up from their chair, went to the car, went home, sat back down again. What is a really great starting point for those guys who have done nothing for months, possibly even years? Well, what they're sitting in is basically the starting point. Just stand up, sit back down again, stand up, sit back down again, do some squats. You know, and if that's your starting point, do three sets of 10 of those repetitions. So three sets of 10 repetitions, mm -hmm. then go for a little walk. And, so, and what you'll find very quickly is that um, the muscles that help you squat are your quadriceps in the front of your thighs, your hamstrings in the back of your thighs, your glute muscles, so your butt muscles that you're sitting on, it's the biggest muscle group that you've got in your body. And it is the muscle group that aids in keeping you stable as well as keeping you mobile. So in using these big muscle groups, you are burning more calories, tick. You are keeping stable. So as we age, you're staving off those concerns about fragility and, and potentially falling. Um, and your core is actually engaged every time you stand up and sit down. So as long as those motions of standing up and sitting back down are controlled without flopping yourself back down on a chair or couch or bench, um, then you're getting that core strength workout as well. So from a personal trainer's perspective, um, squats, lunges, walking, standing on one leg, just balancing, they're all key things. And we talk about primal body movements and these are things like um, walking, running is a primal movement, um, getting up off the ground. So if you're laying on your tummy and you need to get up, a primal movement is being able to get up off the ground off uh, from a prone position. Another one is if you're laying on your back in a supine position, get being able to get up is a primal body movement. So a lot of what we do as personal trainers is actually mimic mimicking those primal movements. As you said that, I was thinking to myself, how many people out there would question whether or not if they lay down on their office floor right now on their back, mm -hmm. how difficult they would find it to get up? Just I, even just as a primal movement, it's a really I would assert test. that there is a large percentage who would find it 
a difficult thing to do. So here's a good test, everyone. Those of you who are listening in your in your in your um, in your office today, if you're listening to this in the background, just get up from your chair and just lie down, and then ask yourself, how much does it hurt, ache, feel uncomfortable for you to actually get from a lying down position all the way to standing, and then think to yourself, maybe I need to move some. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and really, when you said like getting up and walking, I, I know a lot of you out there are thinking, oh, it's, it's ugly outside. You know, I live in, I'm in an industrial lot. I'm in an office that's at the top of a building site and getting up and walking around is just kind of gross and dirty, but it's not. I mean, you're still getting out there and you're getting some fresh air. And I guarantee that there's probably only one or two blocks away that you're getting more into suburban territory with a few more trees. So go and explore the area in which you work. And use it as a learning time as well. So everybody's got smartphones. Turn on a podcast. Oh, there's a listen great to podcast. Small Biz Matters. <laughs> I know a great uh, podcast. There's a bazillion podcasters out there who've got really valuable stuff for you to listen to, and you can stay educated and sort of switch off from whatever else is going on around you while you're listening. What about um, your thoughts on standing and sitting desks and those exercise balls? How many of those things do you think? are really valuable for people just starting out, or is that sort of the next level? Okay. Being seated at a computer for eight hours a day is probably the next smoking, all right? So it being sedentary in your lifestyle and being seated is causing so many health problems. So you mentioned there standing desks. If you can, if you can convince your boss to give you a standing desk, awesome. Stand yeah, up. But a standing desk is just called a few, although actually having said that, I can't think of where you can get telephone books anymore, but a few Encyclopedia Britannicas that you probably got down in your basement. Just go grab them, stick your t- your screen monitor up yep. and then put your, put the, so, so it forces you to stand to be looking at it. Yep. Um, and there's got to be ways of doing it. You don't have to spend a fortune. You can just, you know, make something for yourself. Just be careful that you're not causing other problems with your neck and posture and things like that by actually looking down too much as well. So right. you still want to make sure that from a WHS perspective that you've got things set up Yeah, correctly. okay. And then again, test. If you're doing something for a few days and it's starting to ache your neck, you're doing something Or wrong. lower back or whatever, there's something mm. not right there. Mm, mm, indeed. So, uh, yeah, standing desks are great. Fit balls or, or Swiss balls, variously known as, or core balls. If, if you do want to sit at a desk, then... Get rid of your chair and, and put a fit ball in there and sit on that. But just make sure that your hips are slightly higher than your knees. But it's impossible to sit with a poor posture um, on a fit ball. I was going to say, what is the upright. benefit? Yeah, you've got to sit upright. Right. So your core is engaged mm-hmm. and your shoulders automatically come back. Um, posture is one of those things that because of our lifestyles tends to be, we, we get a bit round-shouldered because everything is arms forward. So we're either working on a keyboard We're looking down at a small smartphone or an iPad. We're driving cars. Everything is about having our our posture forward. forward. So what we want to do is have something that makes you sit upright and if you can bring your keyboard in nice and close to your torso and and just really focus on sitting nice and tall. Um, And what about, um, so with those fitballs, it's quite small and incremental what they're doing. Does that still work your core enough because it's just so small and tiny, each of those little movements? Yeah, and you'll find... Um, as you become more confident sitting on them, you can actually just um, consciously actually bring your feet in closer together. So rather than having a wide base of support with your with your ankles wider apart, bring your feet in closer together and that automatically makes your core switch on. All right, so those deep-seated muscles that keep you stable. And don't forget about those other ideas. I like the ideas of people starting to do um, walking networking yes. as well, particularly out in the bush. If you can get, there's a couple of um, great groups that are held in the Royal Botanical Gardens, for instance. Yes. Um, our friends at um, uh, Aussie Bushwalks, they do those. And I know that um, there's another one coming up next week. Sorry, I can't think of it at the top of my head right now. But um, there's some great um, opportunities to get out and have a walking meeting rather than a sitting down coffee meeting. Yes. And also question yourself, where are you meeting with people? Is it possible rather than um, driving there that you might be able to walk there? Correct. You know, there's nothing wrong with meeting at your local suburban cafe because a lot of people are willing to come to you. You don't have to go to the west fields of the world. You can go to your local cafe, which means you might actually walk there, which is a a whole new uh, opportunity. And you don't have to stay in the cafe to have your coffee and chat. True. So take your keep cup, fill it up, 
go for a walk. Mm, indeed. So you can walk and talk. Exactly. And I suppose walking and talking is better for physical because it works your cardiovascular a little bit more. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's more because I'm just always out of breath because I, I don't think the other person gets a word in edgeways. That's something else I need to work on. <laughs> now, we might take a quick break here on Small Biz Matters. And when we come back after the break, we're going to talk some more to David about um, the, the, physical, the physical and also the emotional and the mental health benefits not to mention the long-term mental health benefits of working um, and being a little bit more physically active. You're listening to Triple H 100.1 FM. We'll be back after this. And you're back in the studio with Triple H 100.1 FM. My name is Alexi Boyd. We are talking all things Small Biz Matters. Thank you for joining me once again. And those of you who's, who might have missed some of today's show, you can catch up via smallbizmatters.com.au. Plus, we have over 150 podcasts just like this one available on iTunes and Podbean and Spotify and wherever else my lovely IT wunderkind has decided to put it up this week because I can't keep up. It's, uh, it's good outsourcing. So today we're talking to David Bowman, who is, of course, uh, a Step Into Life fitness instructor. Um, and congratulations on your recent award. Do you want to just quickly tell us about that as well? Yes. On the 4th of August, I, was, uh, I received a phone call saying that my business had been um, awarded the New South Wales Ambassador of the Year. So I'm very proud of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because you're very passionate about, um, I guess, instigating health and fitness, not just as part of repairing or getting back on track, but actually making it part of your everyday Lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle. It's about being part of your lifestyle. So good nutrition and exercise just becomes part of what you do. Now, before the break, we were talking a bit about how to get started. And I wanted to ask you um, of those exercises you can do to get started, you know, the sitting, the standing, the squatting, the testing yourself by seeing what it feels like when you lay down on the floor to get back up again, um, and just some general slow walking. Does it matter what age you are because I'm imagining when you're talking to someone who's 20 something this is a different conversation to someone you might have when they're 60 something to get started it does matter from from a personal trainer's perspective um, if you are older than 35 and female sorry older than 35 and male or 45 and above and female and you haven't exercised there's a risk factor there so I would always um, recommend that if you've not exercised for a long time... That what's, you go, what's that definition? What's a long time? Oh, look, any, any longer than 12 months because okay. things can change that quickly. Okay. Um, go and see your GP and just get them to do... Get them to do a medical and just make sure that your blood pressure is okay because if you've got high blood pressure, we need to know that as a trainer yep. so that we can modify what we do with your exercises. Um, you know, But you've, you want to get everything checked. Go and get your bloods tested. Just make sure that everything's okay and at least then you know that you're starting from a healthy base even though you know you're not as healthy as you could be. And with regards to if there are any issues such as blood pressure and things like that, would your doctor be the best person to advise you on the type of exercise you should avoid as a result of having that unknown? They will. It depends on the doctor because Mm. there are very conservative GPs out there who will have a different viewpoint to those who are a little bit more progressive in in their opinions on exercise and benefits and things like that. Again, check with your GP. You know, if you trust your GP, go with them. Yeah. You've, you've got to listen to them. Because they're the ones who really know your medical history and Correct. how you're feeling and what's going on as well. And, of course, if you've got any um, underlying conditions or, um, you know, low immunodeficiency or um, un- underlying health concerns, then obviously this is a different track that you take from... We're just talking today to the people who have just been... I'm going to say it, lazy for the last few months and haven't really got round to yeah, doing something. They just haven't apologize. moved much or yeah. enough. And, mm-hmm. the, and there's a realisation... I think generally in the population that we just need to move more, eat better, move more. It's really quite simple formula to to being healthier and happier, more importantly. Um, We we were talking off air before we started and we talked about the correlation between the cardiovascular disease and and mental health, but specifically to do with dementia. And this this came up because my dad... um, has developed dementia and it's progressing quite quickly and I've been having a look at the risk factors given that there is a hereditary component to this and I'm thinking okay how can I stave this off Um, and when you have a look at the risk factors that are presented by Dementia Australia um, they're talking about things that are exactly the same for um, cardiovascular disease and um, I was we were talking about the numbers there are over um, 500,000 people living in Australia at the moment with cardiovascular disease and over 400,000 
with mental health dementia, sorry, with, with dementia. Now, the risk factors are exactly the same for both diseases. They just present differently. So we talk about um, diabetes gives you an increased risk of um, of dementia, as it does with cardiovascular issues. High cholesterol, exactly the same thing. Um, you know, there are, there are so many um, similarities between the two diseases and what you can do to actually lower your risk of contracting cardiovascular disease or dementia. And it basically revolves around good nutrition and exercise. So putting aside the fact that, you know, we're finding it difficult to get up and move, here's a bit of an incentive for you. Um, If you want to stave off dementia and your ability to work long term, if you really love what it is that you do and you really enjoy working in your small business and you want to continue to do that well beyond the supposed age of retirement, um, then you need to think of your mental capacity to do so in terms of your physical fitness and the link between the two. Yeah, and and also, I mean, yes, to be able to continue to work, but then still be a fantastic partner to your partner and still be a fantastic mum or dad to your kids or to their kids, to your grandchildren. I mean, there are so many reasons why we want to not just extend our life, but improve the quality of our life. So when you've got those grandkids come along and they want to play, you still can. Mm. And if they want you to get down on the ground with them as a pop or a nan and you can't get down there because you don't know whether you can get back up again, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. And that's an indicator. I really think that is a real indicator because I'm thinking of all the small businesses that I know of various ages. And I'm not just talking about people who might be, you know, beyond 50 or beyond 60 and thinking to themselves, well, who the hell wants to get up and down off the ground anyway? Um, But there are younger people out there who I think to myself, have you been on the ground recently? Like Mm. getting into bed is not the same as lying prone on the floor and and getting back up again. I, I know I keep coming back to that, but I think to myself, in the times when I've been really unwell or really physically unfit, that's the thing that shocked me mm. into doing something about it. Where I've, it's oh, a really I remember, basic indicator. I remember, yeah. I remember once I was standing at the back of my car and I'd opened the boot. I, I hadn't even moved and my knee gave way. Mm. Like it just buckled and I went and I ended up on the floor. And I went, well, what, what just happened? I didn't even move and, and it buckled underneath me. And it's yeah. all those stabilizing big movements and those, um, what did you call them? Prime, Prime, prime? Primal movement patterns, mm. yeah. And, and thinking about those because you need those to stabilize you long term as Indeed. well. Indeed. Let's talk about the, um, the link between physical fitness and mental health. There's a lot of talk around this and, and the necessity behind it. Um, what, what, what do you believe in your experience is the, is the true connection between the two? They're totally connected. Um, if people are unlucky enough to suffer from anxiety or depression exercise is absolutely paramount that they get it if if their doctor has not already told them um then they need to change doctors because it is absolutely paramount that people with depression and anxiety need to exercise um and when they do exercise they they know when they've had enough and i've actually worked with people who will do an hour session with me whatever that looks like, whether it's a strengthening session or a cardio session or box kick, which is a combination of both, or a, or a stretching session, like a yoga type based thing. If they finish that hour and they're not already feeling the way they know that they should feel when they've exercised, I've seen people go for another half an hour and just go for a walk. They'll finish up with our session and say, okay, fine, I need to go and do some more until I find that sweet spot. So it's actually a physical impact that that exercise has on their well-being and feeling. Mm-hmm. And, and again, with those sort of people who are trying to improve their mental health through exercise, yeah. is that something that you would suggest at the beginning of the day? Because it would flow on, the flow on effects would be throughout the day or sometimes at the end? Ideal, at the I, again, ideally, yes. But if that causes another level of anxiety or stress in your day, find where it doesn't because you don't, want to have it that exercise becomes another pressure point that's just adding to the anxiety that you're already having in your day 
Let's have a quick chat about um, engaging with uh, an expert and helping you with your physical fitness journey, um, particularly if you're the sort of person who has mental health issues and just needs someone to sort of guide you in, in yep. the progression of this, this journey or someone who has literally not moved for two years and doesn't know where to start. What um, is a good conversation starter and what, will, what sort of questions will a good physical um, fitness expert ask you before they get started? They'll... Well, a physical fitness expert will ask you to fill out a health declaration form. Now, is that just a waiver? It certainly, it certainly is um, an insurance requirement that we do that. So it's not just a waiver because we're all insured, mm-hmm. and as as personal trainers. Mm-hmm. Or should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, if personal trainers out there don't have insurance, they shouldn't be practicing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a conversation. The, the mental health aspects quite often don't come up in one of our initial consultations because there is still this stigma attached in a lot of instances to people um, with anxiety and depression. Um, I guess what I'm saying is to people who do have concerns like that be brave enough to actually tell your practitioner right up front because then you're not going to get judged I think is the big thing here and what's amazed me in the six years that I've been doing this is that I had no idea how many people I would meet who once you get to know them will actually say well in fact you know I actually have these concerns and I and I exercise because I need the exercise to be able to help with my stress and anxiety. But it's generally not one of the first conversations that we have about goals. And would that help if the person um, was brave enough to give that information at the beginning just like, like they do about their physical fitness? It would certainly help in in my ability to be able to support someone through their exercise program. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. And then all the other usual questions about, you know, do you have any underlying health concerns or anything that we need to know about? What's your range of movement? What, How much exercise have you done previously? All those sort of questions? Yeah, we, we go through all of that stuff in the initial consultation. Um, but this is all, of course, on the on the back of potentially someone having had a doctor's clearance, mm-hmm. their GP's clearance anyway. So... There's that happening. They've been told they can train. Then I need to know if there's any mechanic, biomechanical issues that we need to deal with. Um, and if well. they join um, an outdoor group like Step Into Life and they, they go along to the first session, um, I think the thing that would freak me out about that is I'm looking at people who have been doing this for quite a while mm-hmm. and are very, um, to me, look experts in, in, in their physical fitness. And I'm going to jump straight in and immediately start doing what they're doing I assume that's not going to happen because I think that's maybe a lot of people's fear around that. I, I think the the fear um, has probably what you just expressed has probably come a lot from the the gym environment where you know that there are people in there who are just going to stand and lift weights and look at themselves in mirrors all day. <laughs> I, I can guarantee you there are no mirrors out on the parks where we <laughs> operate at Taramara Memorial Park and down at Linfield Oval, um, and there's no judgment, no judgment, no mirrors. And everybody comes at a different fitness level. And there are people there. Sure, there are people there who are quite fit. Um, And there are others who are just starting out on their fitness journey as well. And in every session that we do, we've got varying degrees of fitness levels. So it doesn't matter where you are on your fitness journey. Just be prepared to jump on in and do what you can do. Fantastic. Well, there's some really great advice to get started, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank David for coming along on the program today on Triple H. Thank you, Alexi. Tell us a little bit how they can find out more about you and Step Into Life. Well, Step Into Life, my two businesses, uh, Step Into Life is at Linfield and at Taramara, and you can check us out on our website. In Karingai, we're fortunate to have two others as well. So Richard uh, owns Step Into Life at West Pimble, and Danny operates at St Ives on the Village Green. So there's four of us in Karingai. There is absolutely no reason, no excuse. You're only literally five minutes away from any of us. Um, go to the website. The standing offer on the website is for one free session. We've, uh, as a as a collaborative group in Karingai, decided that's not enough. We want you to come down and experience a full week of exercise with us for free so you can see the different programming that we do, check out what's right for you. Um, and that's a standing offer just for Karingai. So you get a free week's training, come down, give it a try, and hopefully you'll fall in love with the community, which is 
pretty much what we've got. It's a lovely fitness community. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much once again for joining Small Biz Matters, David. And if you've missed any of today's program, you can catch up via our website, smallbizmatters.com.au. You can find us on iTunes. If you're enjoying these podcasts, please give us a little like, a little star rating or whatever it is, and maybe drop a comment if you're enjoying it. And if there's a, a particular topic that you'd like us to cover and you feel like we haven't done it, I'd challenge you to find out if we haven't. Although there's still people coming up with really fantastic topics, let us know and we will find the expert to answer your questions. You've been listening to Small Biz Matters with Alexi Boyd. We'll see you all next week with another great guest. Thanks for joining us on Triple H 100.1 FM.